Review of Atomic Habits, Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results An Easy and Proven Way to Build Good Habits and Break Bad Ones by James Clear About the author James Clear James Clear is a blogger. He was writing at jamesclear.com about habits, decision making, and continuous improvement since 2012. He is the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Atomic Habits, which has sold more than 5 million copies worldwide and has been translated into more than 50 languages. He is also known for the popular 321 newsletter which is sent out each week to more than 1 million subscribers. He is also a speaker at major companies such as Cisco, General Electric, Honda, Intel, LinkedIn, Lululemon, McKinsey and Company, Merrill Lynch, and many more. Weightlifter and, former, athlete. And contributor to Against Malaria Foundation, AMF. The book Atomic Habits The book is 256 pages split in seven big parties first is, Fundamentals, Why Tiny Changes Make a Big Difference. And then the four laws, the first law, make it obvious. The second law, make it attractive. The third law, make it easy. The fourth law, make it satisfying. Each one detailed and explained in three sections. Then advanced tactics, how to go from being merely good to being truly great. And at last appendix. The science of how habits work. The Science of How Habits Work The process of building a habit can be divided into four simple steps, cue, craving, response, and reward. Breaking it down into these fundamental parts can help us understand what a habit is, how it works, and how to improve it. This four-step pattern is the backbone of every habit, and your brain runs through these steps in the same order each time. The cue triggers a craving, which motivates a response, which provides a reward, which satisfies the craving and, ultimately, becomes associated with the cue. Together, these four steps form a neurological feedback loop cue, craving, response, reward, cue, craving, response, reward that ultimately allows you to create automatic habits. This cycle is known as the habit loop. The four laws of behavior change. The four laws of behavior change. The four laws of behavior change provides a simple set of rules for creating good habits and breaking bad ones. How to create a good habit. The first law, cue make it obvious. The second law, craving make it attractive. The third law, response make it easy. The fourth law, reward make it satisfying. We can invert these laws to learn how to break a bad habit. How to break a bad habit. Inversion of the first law, cue make it invisible. 
Inversion of the second law, craving make it unattractive. Inversion of the third law, response make it difficult. Inversion of the fourth law, reward make it unsatisfying. The third law, response, make it easy. Take action, don't be in motion. It is easy to get bogged down trying to find the optimal. Plan for change, the fastest way to lose weight, the best program to build muscle, the perfect idea for a side hustle. We are so focused on figuring out the best approach that we never get around to taking action. As Voltaire once wrote, the best is the enemy of the good. If I outline 20 ideas for articles I want to write, that's motion. If I actually sit down and write an article, that's action. If I search for a better diet plan and read a few books on the topic, that's motion. If I actually eat a healthy meal, that's action. Sometimes motion is useful, but it will never produce an outcome by itself. It doesn't matter how many times you go talk to the personal trainer, that motion will never get you in shape. Only the action of working out will get the result you're looking to achieve. If you want to master a habit, the key is to start with repetition, not perfection. You don't need to map out every feature of a new habit. You just need to practice it. Automaticity Habit formation is the process by which a behavior becomes progressively more automatic through repetition. The more you repeat an activity, the more the structure of your brain changes to become efficient at that activity. Each time you repeat an action, you are activating a particular neural circuit associated with that habit. This means that simply putting in your reps is one of the most critical steps you can take to encoding a new habit. It is why the students who took tons of photos improved their skills while those who merely theorized about perfect photos did not. One group engaged in active practice, the other in passive learning. One in action, the other in motion. All habits follow a similar trajectory from effortful practice to automatic behavior, a process known as automaticity. Automaticity is the ability to perform a behavior without thinking about each step, which occurs when the non-conscious mind takes over. In practice, it doesn't really matter how long it takes for a habit to become automatic. What matters is that you take the actions you need to take to make progress. Whether an action is fully automatic is of less importance. To build a habit, you need to practice it. And the most effective way to make practice happen is to adhere to. The third law of behavior change, make it easy. The law of least effort. Every action requires a certain amount of energy. The more energy required, the less likely it is to occur. If your goal is to do a hundred push UPS per day, that's a lot of energy. In the beginning, when you are motivated and excited, you can muster the strength to get started. days, such a massive effort feels exhausting. Meanwhile, sticking to the habit of doing one push-up per day requires almost no energy to get started. And the less energy a habit requires, the more likely it is to occur.
Look at any behavior that fills up much of your life and you'll see that it can be performed with very low levels of motivation. Habits like scrolling on our phones, checking email, and watching television steal so much of our time because they can be performed almost without effort. They are remarkably convenient. In a sense, every habit is just an obstacle to getting what you really want. Dieting is an obstacle to getting fit. Meditation is an obstacle to feeling calm. Journaling is an obstacle to thinking clearly. You don't actually want the habit itself. What you really want is the outcome the habit delivers. The greater the obstacle that is, the more difficult the habit the more friction there is between you and your desired end state. This is why it is crucial to make your habits so easy that you'll do them even when you don't feel like it. If you can make your good habits more convenient, you'll be more likely to follow through on them. Prime your environment. One of the most effective ways to reduce the friction associated with your habits is to practice environment design. In Chapter 6, we discussed environment design as a method for making cues more obvious, but you can also optimize your environment to make actions easier. For example, when deciding where to practice a new habit, it is best to choose a place that is already along the path of your daily routine. Habits are easier to build when they fit into the flow of your life. You are more likely to go to the gym if it is on your way to work because stopping doesn't add much friction to your lifestyle. By comparison, if the gym is off the path of your normal commute even by just a few blocks now, you're going out of your way to get there. In an article published in the New Yorker titled Better All the Time, James Suroiaki writes, Japanese firms emphasized what came to be known as lean production, relentlessly looking to remove waste of all kinds from the production process, down to redesigning workspaces, so workers didn't have to waste time twisting and turning to reach their tools. The result was that Japanese factories were more efficient and Japanese products were more reliable than American ones. In 1974, service calls for American-made color televisions were five times as common as for Japanese televisions. By 1979, it took American workers three times as long to assemble their sets. Similarly, when we remove the points of friction that sap our time and energy, we can achieve more with less effort. This is one reason tidying up can feel so good. We are simultaneously moving forward and lightening the cognitive load our environment places on us. If you look at the most habit-forming products, you'll notice that one of the things these goods and services do best is remove little bits of friction from your life. Meal delivery services reduce the friction of shopping for groceries. Dating apps reduce the friction of making social introductions. Ride-sharing services reduce the friction of getting across town. Text messaging reduces the friction of sending a letter in the mail. The central idea is to create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Much of the battle of building better habits comes down to finding ways to reduce the friction associated with our good habits and increase the friction associated with our bad ones. Oswald Nichols is an IT developer from Natchez, Mississippi. He is also someone who understands the power of priming his environment. Nichols dialed in his cleaning habits by following a strategy he refers to as resetting the room. For instance, when he finishes watching television, he places the remote back on the TV stand, arranges the pillows on the couch, and folds the blanket. When he leaves his car, he throws any trash away. Whenever he takes a shower, he wipes down the toilet while the shower is warming up. As he notes, the perfect time to clean the toilet is right before you wash yourself in the shower anyway. 
the purpose of resetting each room is not simply to clean up after the last action, but to prepare for the next action. When I walk into a room everything is in its right place, Nuckles wrote. Because I do this every day in every room. Stuff always stays in good shape. People think I work hard but I'm actually really lazy. I'm just proactively lazy. It gives you so much time back. There are many ways to prime your environment so it's ready for immediate use. If you want to cook a healthy breakfast, place the skillet on the stove, set the cooking spray on the counter, and lay out any plates and utensils you'll need the night before. When you wake up, making breakfast will be easy. Want to draw more? Put your pencils, pens, notebooks, and drawing tools on top of your desk, within easy reach. Want to exercise? Set out your workout clothes, shoes, gym bag, and water bottle ahead of time. Want to improve your diet? Chop up a ton of fruits and vegetables on weekends and pack them in containers, so you have easy access to healthy, ready-to-eat options during the week. The 2-Minute Rule No to counteract this tendency is to use the 2-Minute Rule, which states, when you start a new habit, it should take less than 2 minutes to do. You'll find that nearly any habit can be scaled down into a 2-Minute Version Read before bed each night becomes read one page. Do 30 minutes of yoga becomes take out my yoga mat. Study for class becomes open my notes. Fold the laundry becomes fold one pair of socks. Run three miles becomes tie my running shoes. You can usually figure out the gateway habits that will lead to your desired outcome by mapping out your goals on a scale from very easy to very hard. For instance, Running a marathon is very hard. Running a 5K is hard. Walking 10,000 steps is moderately difficult. Walking 10 minutes is easy. And putting on your running shoes is very easy. Your goal might be to run a marathon, but your gateway habit is to put on your running shoes. That's how you follow the two minute rule. People often think it's weird to get hyped about reading one page or meditating for one minute or making one sales call. But the point is not to do one thing. The point is to master the habit of showing up. The truth is, a habit must be established before it can be improved. If you can't learn the basic skill of showing up, then you have little hope of mastering the finer details. Instead of trying to engineer a perfect habit from the start, do the easy thing on a more consistent basis. You have to standardize before you can optimize. The more you ritualize the beginning of a process, the more likely it becomes that you can slip into the state of deep focus that is required to do great things. By doing the same warm-up before every workout, you make it easier to get into a state of peak performance. By following the same creative ritual, you make it easier to get into the hard work of creating. By developing a consistent power down habit, you make it easier to get to bed at a reasonable time each night. You may not be able to automate the whole process, but you can make the first action mindless. Make it easy to start and the rest will follow.